Hey guys, this is my first YouTube video. Uh, it's about Hatsan BT-65. Uh, in my opinion, uh, a great gun uh, that needs some modification. But uh, overall, for the price, you g really get a, get a lot. Uh, this video is uh, specially made for the guys uh, from Altaros. Uh, they make uh, air gun regulators, high quality air gun regulators. And uh, during this, this video, you will see what this gun is capable of with modification. Also, how uh, there's also a section for high power, so uh, without a regulator, and also the uh, part when I explain how to make uh, the most out of it when you install the regulator. Uh, so have fun and hope you learn, some, learn something. Bye. Uh, now the reason that I did most of this uh, modification is because I wanted to use uh, uh, a red regulator, pressure regulator with this gun. And uh, I, I bought this Altaros regulator, which is very good regulator, very precise. Um, and uh, after installing it, I was quite disappointed. The shot count was very low, and uh, also the power was low. Uh, it was just, uh, I, I didn't see any point in it, because I didn't get, even, uh, even the accuracy wasn't that much bigger. Uh, and after this modification, I got to a point when I really, really significantly rise up uh, the shot count and also the power. Uh, so, uh, but in the end, um, because I also am kind of a guy that also likes to have a lot of power, uh, and I have two cylinders, uh, I also uh, found out, uh, realized that those modifications were also good for the unregulated rifle. Uh, now the, the reason that most people are having so, including me, that having so much problem with um, uh, putting in a regulator in the rifle and not getting good results is because this rifle is, uh, was made uh, to be tuned up and not down. So it's made for unregulated uh, uh, cylinders and it does not perform well when you put in a regu regulator. Uh, so, um, there are quite a few modifications I did, uh, I'm going to uh, go through all of them, but I'm going to also tell you which one is, I don't know, uh, shot count related, which one is accuracy related, or which one is absolutely not necessary, but I just did it because, I don't know, I liked it, or, or whatever, the aesthetic, uh, aesthetics and so on. So, um, the most important thing is to uh, make a lighter hammer. Uh, the hammer is too heavy and uh, that, uh, for that reason uh, the valve, especially when you put in the regulator, uh, stays open for too long. So it stays open as long as the uh, pellet uh, travels through the barrel and of course in the end you get some gashing uh, air out of the barrel which doesn't contribute to velocity, it only, only empties your uh, cylinders a little faster. Uh, that is why I drill a lot of holes, hopefully you can see this, a lot of holes in everywhere actually I could. And also I made it a little thinner, so I uh, took some material off here. Uh, and I also believe in this case, in this side, and I took out, out all of this except for the part that is actually uh, used for um, uh, the, the trigger part that it's holding the hammer back, so the, the sear that is trapping the hammer when you cock the rifle. Um, uh, at the beginning, it, the weight was approximately uh, 90 grams, which is way too much. Uh, for example, Shing Song Karel, Karel Ultra uh, has a 90 gram uh, uh, hammer and it's a 9 millimeter gun. Uh, this is 6.35 or uh, uh, 0.25 caliber. Uh, and um, it was way too much, so uh, right now it's about, I think, 60 grams. Uh, let me check. So I took off approximately a third of its weight. 
So yes, it's 62.4 grams. Um, and uh, you can also notice that uh, this part was brass before and now it's plastic. So I, I really took everything off that I could. I didn't drill a hole over here and I don't recommend you do that because over here the anti-bouncing uh, rod is... Uh, the hammer hits in the anti-bouncing rod so if I put a hole in there it, it might break off uh, so this is this is the most important part and the second most important part I'm talking about the shot count now is to uh, make this a little longer and uh, put in a strong, stronger, uh, stronger spring. So this is the uh, anti-bouncing bouncing device. And um, before uh, the uh, so uh, uh, the anti-bouncing device uh, works. Uh, so the hammer travels forward towards the valve, and when it hits the valve, it bounces off it. And it sometimes it bounces so far back that uh, after it's going. To, to, towards the valve again, it reopens the valve the second time and the third time and etc. etc. So it uh, uses a lot more air than uh, the actually uh, it actually has to. Uh, so if you let make this a little longer, that means that just let me get this in the right place so it's turned like this. So after it hits the hammer, it has to trap. It has to trap the hammer at as soon as possible so it doesn't get too far back because if it gets a little further back it has enough force to strike the hammer uh, the valve again and reopen it and of course use air at the time when you don't want to uh, so this is this is the most uh, th those two modifications are the most important in order to get a higher shot count um, Okay, so moving on, uh, let's talk a little about um, velocity and power. Uh, one thing you can do to increase power is to make a bigger transfer port. This is uh, not important for the shot count, this is just to uh, uh, have more efficiency uh, regarding uh, pressure so you can have lower pressure and still get quite high velocities so before I think it was like four and a half millimeters and now it's uh, six millimeters that's for 25 caliber if you have 22 caliber or 177 of course you don't have to uh, make uh, such a big transfer port but it does help uh, regarding uh, uh, pressure efficiency uh, I also did a modification here which is not relevant to anything, just to make the cocking easier. Uh, I put a bearing on the top of this rod, so this rod actually goes back and it cocks the hammer. And uh, over here there was, this was just steel, there was no bearing on the top. And uh, of course when, the, when you cock the gun, uh, the, this steel would press up against this uh, brass and you will cock the hammer back and uh, now that th there is a, a bearing on that uh, steel rod uh, there is a lot of less friction and it's easier to cock of course uh, when you uh, make a bigger trans transfer port you also have to make uh, the bigger hole in the barrel in the barrel and uh, also the whole way through the the um, sorry through this piece not only the transfer por port itself but also through here you might uh, need to use a different uh, set of uh, o-rings after you do this um, to get a good seal Okay, so this is uh, for the power, and also there is another big, uh, big improvement uh, regarding the power. Now this is not an important uh, uh, modification uh, regarding accuracy, only uh, efficiency and power. 
Uh, this is a stock, a uh, stock uh, valve assembly. So the valve goes back from here and sticks out of here. You can see over here I have the installed uh, valve. So the hammer hits here and opens the valve. And uh, the stock one has, uh, has this ring around it and a lot of holes. And these holes, of course, have a certain air capacity uh, which is not wanted uh, uh, in, uh, in regards to uh, efficiency. You get a lower efficiency if you have a big chamber before the pallet, uh, after the valve and before the pallet. And this is, uh, like, let's say, uh, regarding uh, efficiency, this is like you would have a bigger caliber because bigger caliber, bigger barrel has a uh, uh, bigger volume for air. That's why you need more air. And uh, over here, you lose because you have a lot of air here. And this air doesn't do any good to you regarding accuracy or power. So I made a complete uh, new assembly from brass. Uh, I also made this hole a lot wider, so there's more space. So this is uh, especially important when you are using regulator, because regulator sits over like this. And uh, of course you want the chamber uh, of regulated air, which is this hole in here, as big as possible. And if you don't have a lot of space here, you only have the space that it's, uh, so the volume that is in the valve. Oh, sorry, the uh, regulator. And uh, once you widen this, you get uh, like uh, plus one third of the capacity of the regulator itself. Uh, and I only made one hole uh, from where it goes to transfer port. It doesn't want to focus. Just a second. Uh, it's a little better now. Okay. So only one hole and the dimension is exactly the same as the transfer port, so transfer port, so it's six millimeter. And also I put O-rings right beside this hole uh, and not here because I also don't want any air to go over here. I just I basically want all the air to go to the transfer port and nowhere else. Um, uh, okay. Um, now the next, uh, not really modification, but just a change in springs, uh, uh, valve spring. This is the stock valve spring, and this is the one I use for the uh, for when I use the rifle as a regulator rifle, so with uh, Altaro's uh, regulator. Uh, this one is much much stronger, and the reason why you have to use a much stronger spring is because. Uh, a regulator works like this. Once the shot has been taken, uh, it almost empties this uh, cylinder, uh, which is uh, where is the, the regulator the regulated pressure is, and then slowly it recharges to the pressure you have the set, uh, you have it set on the regulator. And because right after the shot the pressure is very low, there is a lot a lot less force on the valve to close itself. You don't have this problem uh, when you have an unregulated uh, rifle because the pressure is always high behind uh, the regulate, uh, the valve and uh, this high pressure closes the valve very fast. So if you are using um, uh, with the gun without a regulator, you can use the stock, stock spring, it's perfectly okay. But if you use uh, the gun with the regulator, then it's highly recommended that you use a stronger spring. Again, I hope this will focus my hands. Okay, this is it. So, this is very stiff spring. Uh, okay, um, so we've gone through uh, regulator, hammer. I also did some uh, work on the trigger, but this is not relevant to anything, it's just to make it uh, a little lighter, even though the Hudson by default has a very good trigger. Okay, yes, another port. Uh, another uh, modification um, that has to do with uh, efficiency and uh, actually more more power, so velocity. This is uh, an uh, 22 original, so stock uh, pellet probe. Uh, here we go. 
as you can see the point of this probe is very thick um, and because of this uh, you, there's very little room around it uh, for the air to flow uh, and it kind of kind of makes the same uh, uh, same effect as a small transfer port and this pin is actually good if it's as thin as possible of course you don't uh, you must not make it too thin because it will break off this is brass so you have to make it at least uh, thick enough not uh, not to damage uh, so it not not damage when you fire the gun or when you cock and load the pellet inside uh, so I made this I actually uh, also made it too thin so it uh, got broken up the first time uh, I fired the rifle and then I inserted in a steel uh, steel pin which is I believe like one and a half millimeter two millimeters thick so very thin and this allows more air to so the air easy easier flow of the air uh, and uh, therefore higher velocities with smaller pressures and you you want a, s a smaller you want uh, the regulator to be set at the smallest pressure possible because the smaller the pressure the more accurate the gun is for a few reasons for one you can uh, have the uh, the hammer spring a lot lighter and therefore uh, create uh, less stress less uh, shaking to the gun prior to the uh, exit of the pellet for the barrel and um, the second is just the uh, general stress on the rifle so and also third of course it uh, has to do with efficiency the lower uh, the pressure is set the more shot count you get because it you have to uh, um, the pressure in the bigger part of the cylinder so unregulated side of the cylinder has to drop a lot lower to get to the point where your uh, uh, regulator is set so of course that means more shots uh, right now I have it set to uh, 130 bars although it looks more but uh, due to um, so according to my tests this is 130 bars um, okay so now we are at just let me check okay so the muzzle brake this is purely uh, accuracy this doesn't have to do anything with efficiency I made I oh sorry I made a new muzzle brake just straight muzzle brake because Hudson makes like you would use an I don't know a very <laughs> poor, poorly <laughs> poorly sharpened uh, drill and just drill it in <laughs> so it's uh, it's uh, it doesn't look even good and it definitely doesn't shoot good and uh, it, this will improve your uh, accuracy very much and uh, this is actually a stock so uh, Hudson's barrel this is not a uh, lot of Walter's barrels because uh, Hudson also offers BT-65s with uh, Walter barrels and in my opinion this is barrel is just I won't say just as good but it's definitely more than good enough for the gun so you don't have to uh, have uh, Walter's uh, barrel to get good accuracy you also only need to make a good and uh, new muzzle brake and this was blued after that's why it's not seen that it's anything any work has been done to it and uh, there's another thing uh, with the gun uh, you get this muzzle grape uh, muzzle brake uh, end cap uh, which I don't recommend that you use because it's sort of like you would put a tube at the end of the muzzle and that means that what you did at, is uh, uh, when the um, pellet exits the barrel it's still not uh, away from the air uh, pre uh, so, so high pressure air that was behind them in the barrel because uh, you probably heard of air strippers and the job of an air stripper is to strip away the air the high pressured air that was behind the pellet in the barrel because this air can uh, can uh, uh, have a bad influence in the accuracy because it's it's like you would uh, I don't know 
throw a, I don't know a ping pong ball and then just uh, blow at it and of course it would change direction and um, instead of this uh, either you just don't put on here anything or you put on something like uh, uh, this this is uh, something I made from brass so it's again problem with focus so yeah so it's just piece of brass it has a thread on one side and nothing on the other so just hold and what I do is just put it over the barrel and just thread it on and it's just it's just a little bit uh, higher than the muzzle of the barrel so if I accidentally hit on the floor with the barrel I don't damage the muzzle that's basically the only purpose and aesthetics of course uh, of course uh, if you don't have an option to do this you can also buy a hot suns air stripper uh, in my experience, uh, the gun is not, uh, it doesn't improve accuracy uh, compared to not having anything or just putting on this uh, uh, end cap. But definitely don't use the end cap that you get with Hudson. Mm -hmm. This is usually a, a, a quite a uh, accuracy, you get accuracy issues if you use this one. Um, one thing you can do also to increase uh, velocity or power is to make this part of the valve thicker. Uh, this way you allow more air to pass through and also to make this part more straight. Not completely straight but like it is now. Uh, that way as soon as the valve opens uh, the it will open fully and not just partially um, and also I made a new valve seal from plastic this is some kind of special plastic I'm not sure what it's called uh, but uh, I made the hole through it just a little bit smaller it was uh, 6.5 millimeters before and now it's only 6 uh, and uh, what this does is um, it actually makes uh, a little easier for the valve to open and uh, because the valve is easier to open you can uh, use a weaker sp hammer spring or just uh, set it to, to a little weaker because uh, you want the hammer spring uh, um, you don't want the hammer to make too much stress uh, to the gun when, when you shoot so this is one more modification, it's not necessary, but it will improve uh, especially velocities and also accuracy. I think that's it. Yeah, that would be about it. All the modifications I did to this rifle. Of course I didn't do them all at once. I tried a lot of things before I get to the point where I was satisfied. Yeah, I forgot to mention this part. This is a spring retainer for the um, valve spring. And uh, I reduce the size and make a lot bigger holes on it so the air can flow through it easier. Uh, this is not so important. Uh, it makes a little difference in uh, regarding uh, uh, pressure efficiency so uh, velocity but it's not that important so that's it I will uh, make uh, some pictures of uh, this uh, uh, parts that I customly made and hopefully uh, you will have uh, less problem after you do this medication with uh, this regulator uh, I definitely re recommend using it it really uh, uh, brings out uh, shot consistency and uh, accuracy to this gun because the gun otherwise is very good for its money it's not that expensive and you get a lot for, uh, for, for your money so this is it check out the pictures and have fun
it's quite cold out, out here, so hopefully everything will turn out okay. Uh, I've done uh, some extensive modification on this rifle and uh, I'm quite pleased with the results. Right now I have it set up uh, on high power uh, and uh, without uh, regulator. You can see that it is charged to about 200 bars, maybe a little over. It's very cold out here and I wanted to give optimal performance. Uh, okay, so we have a crony set up over there, as you can see. And uh, I'm going to be using uh, pellets from H&N, uh, Barracuda. These are uh, 31 grain, uh, very heavy pellets in uh, 25 caliber. Okay, so let's start with the crony. You can see this, okay. So it's going to be nine shots, one magazine from 200 bars. As you can see the uh, power is quite high. Uh, if we were to use lighter pellets like uh, JSB's uh, 25 grains um, uh, Kings, uh, the velocity will be would be supersonic, and of course power would uh, sorry accuracy would uh, be uh, probably uh, a little it would be less accurate. Yeah, I forgot to mention the pressure after those nine shots is still about. 170 bars so we could good uh, could get uh, quite a few shots more uh, the efficiency is uh, after this modification is very good as you can see um, uh, right now I'm going to test uh, do the same test so crony of the 25 grains GSB's uh, GSB Kings I have my rifle charged to 200 bars again and I'm going to do the whole magazine so 9 shots through the crony just let me set up the crony okay. here we go So, nine shots. Supersonic. So, nine shots. And the rifle is down to... Well, I don't know it will focus. Just let me try to crack this. So, like this. So, we are down to about uh, just under 170 bars. So, this is the hot sun modificated for high velocities, high energies and sti still bigger efficiency than with uh, stock components.
Keep in mind it's very cold out here, so the velocities are slightly lower. Uh, I was getting uh, in the summer around uh, 290 meters per second. So let's go. This time I also let the gun to uh, cool a little bit so that it's uh, the same temperatures and as it is uh, outside. As you can see we get a much bigger consistency than before. Okay, second magazine. Ah, again. The lights are bad. Take the last one. Yeah, let's load up one more. I think you can agree that the consistency of the speeds are extremely, extremely good. Okay, in, the, in this last magazine, we will start to notice the uh, degree. Uh, the the speed is. Uh, slowly getting down so it's the pellets will not be so fast anymore okay let's start let's let me center okay still the same speed okay the speed is slowly 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 decreasing but we still get good velocity so I'm going to keep shooting till the magazine run out last one I think no 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 okay um, so we started with 200 bars and now we are at a little over a hundred I'm not sure it's focusing that no it's not just give it a second Okay, here we go. Ah, the zoom is too high. Just give me a minute. Okay, so we are just over a hundred, which means probably that the regulator is set even lower than 130 bars. Nevertheless, the results are great. Their accuracy, uh, the, of this, uh, the consistency of the speed is good, and job done.